Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. On this video, I'm going to show you how to finger drum. Coming up. There are many ways to program drums. You can use your mouse to input the notes into the key editor or the piano roll. You can use step sequencers. You can also use pad controllers like the Machina or the Akai ones. There are quite a few of them on the market right now. Or you can finger drum. So what is finger drumming and why should you use it? With finger drumming, you're basically controlling your drum kits using your keyboard like this. So why should you use finger drumming instead of everything else? Well, I feel that finger drumming gives you by far the most natural and realistic results, especially when it comes to acoustic drums. So what I'm going to do today is demystify how finger drumming works and how you can use it to get more realistic drums. If you have any questions about what we're going to show today and you want more of this content, please let us know down in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to get notified for our upcoming videos. All right, let's get started. The very first thing I would suggest you do is select a drum kit that inspires you, a drum kit that you really like. So if you want to use an acoustic drum kit, that's great. If you want to use an electronic drum kit, that's also fine. Just make sure that you're very happy with the sound so that you can actually start practicing. So the very first thing you need to know is the GM mapping. So this is the general MIDI drum map, which has been around for ages. And many keyboard manufacturers, synth manufacturers were following this drum mapping so that they, you could basically take any MIDI file that contained drums, drum parts, and you could play it on every keyboard. So most manufacturers, most keyboards follow this drum mapping. Now, if you know this drum mapping, that's great because then you can also play every drum kit in a software instrument. Most commercial drum libraries like Groove Agent, Steven Slate, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Addictive Drums, all those pieces of software can be mapped with GM mapping, even if they don't use it natively. So if you know this protocol, you're good to go. So what I've loaded here is a very simple GM drum kit from Hylian Sonic 3. Here's how the GM mapping works. We have C1 right here, and we have our kick drum. C sharp, we have our side stick. D, snare, D sharp, we have our clap, E, another snare, so you can do rolls like this. Then we have our toms, which range from F to D, and we have our hi-hats right here, closed, closed, and open. Now the great thing is with open hi-hats, you can actually mute them, choke them when you play the close hi-hats, and that's exactly how real drums works in real life. So you can do really nice hi-hat patterns like this. Then we have our crashes. The crashes leave on C sharp and D. So you can actually play left and right crash very, very easily. See, like this. Then we have our rides. So D sharp, F, and B. And then we have some more elements, of course. We have our tambourines there, more cowbell, vibra slap, and of course, if you when you go higher, you get some percussion. So that's the typical GM mapping. We also have some different things over here below the kick drum. We have drum rolls. I'm going to show you how you can use this to create some really nice grooves. The most important thing to know when you want to finger drum and you want to be fast and you want to be realistic is the positioning of your fingers on the keyboard. So I found that the best position is this position right here. 
So that's how I place my fingers when I want to finger drum, when I want to start finger drumming. That's the starting position, right? Right there. So I have my kick drum, I have my snares, instant access, I have access to my hi-hats, and access to my crash. And of course, if I want, I have access to my toms, right? So you can play a groove. If you place your fingers like this, you're ready to go. You can instantly start playing a groove. And at this point, I'd like to share a little story with you. The reason why I started finger drumming in the first place, actually. I think I was like seven years old and I was going after my piano lesson to uh, my local uh, music store. And one day, uh, a guy walks in and uh, asks the st staff member to give him some drums. Said, can you give me some drums? And this guy was blind. Uh, and, you know, the guy uh, put on a preset with drums and the guy started doing this. Something like that. So I was like, wow, can you actually do this on a keyboard? And the fact that this guy couldn't see and he was just, you know, he was doing that, it really impressed me. And I thought, you know, I really want to do this. I really want to be able to do this. So here's how you start. Start with a very simple pattern, like kick drum and snare. Just trust me, start with that. Place your hand like I showed you before. So you have your kick drum and your snare. Don't do this. That's never going to work. Don't do this because you need your right hand for the hi-hats. So start with something like this. I know it's boring. Then start embellishing the kick drum a little bit more. Now, right hand goes on the right position. And now we're going to add a very simple hi-hat eighth notes. Now, this sounds boring. This sounds a little bit, you know, very, very simple. But what I would encourage you to do if you're starting out is play this simple groove and try and be dynamic because that's the next thing you want to know about. Try and be dynamic. Try and add, you know, fluctuations to your playing. So instead of playing like this, start playing with more feeling. See? With the hi-hat. I'm adding dynamics, I'm adding accents. So that's the very first thing. I know it's simple, but once you start getting a little bit of a feel with your drums and your fingers interact well with the keyboard, that's when you're going to get more realistic drum parts. Now, after you do this, you can start adding more elements to your performance. So maybe a few more snares, or another thing you can do is start adding ghost notes. Now, I know this is going to be a little bit harder to do, but ghost notes is the number one reason why you might want to finger drum because they're really, really hard to program. You need to go into your DAW and start adding those little notes and change the velocities. They're really hard to program, and you always need like um, an element of surprise with your ghost notes. So. The first thing I would try would be to add ghost notes with the snare. So let's try and do this. Simple ghost notes. So if you cannot play fast, don't worry, just play slowly. Now, let's create a more interesting groove with our hi-hats. You know, start playing just the right hand. See, I can close. And 
And then when you're confident, increase the tempo. And then you can start introducing your crashes. See, your crashes are right there. You don't even need to move. You don't even need to, you know, jump around the keyboard. Now, if I want to do rolls, there are many ways to do it. You can go like this. But this is a little bit of a harder way because you need to be like a good keyboard player. Everything that I'm showing you, you can do it without being a good keyboard player. You don't even need to be a keyboard player. Just... See, so you can do you can do it like this. When a drummer does snare rolls, he doesn't have any other hands, so he won't be doing like he won't be doing toms at the same time. So you can take your hand out of the hi hats for a second, you know, and maybe start very slowly. Dynamics. And of course, you also have your toms right here, so you can go like this. 